the issue of abortion and really the preservation of Roe versus Wade is really playing a huge role in the midterms or could play a huge role in the midterms. I think it's really thrown a wrench into both parties' messaging platforms. You know, Republicans for a long time were focusing on crime, inflation, and the border, and they were very incredibly disciplined on those three issues, hoping to connect with voters on those issues. We now have Democrats essentially trying to tie Republicans to this ruling, trying to force them to talk about something else that is not um, crime, inflation, and the border. And although we don't have a set ruling yet, this was just a draft decision that was leaked, um, Democrats are very much warning of the consequences of overturning Roe v. Wade and very much trying to make it a campaign issue. I think it really could become a campaign issue when it comes to those suburban voters, independent voters, swing, you know, those swing voters. We know that both sides of the uh, abortion debate, whether it's the anti-abortion conservative activists or the abortion rights li liberal activists, they will both be turning out to vote on this issue and they will be galvanized by this leak and this decision. However, I think you're going to see Democrats really trying to convert swing voters or get swing voters onto their side using this issue, particularly in the suburbs where we see that a lot of suburban voters may not be um, you know, incredibly um, conservative when it comes to issues like abortion, but at the same time, they're unhappy with rising crime rates and inflation as well. So I think Democrats are really going to try to make it an issue. However, we've gotten a bit of a sneak peek into how Republicans plan to message on the issue. I think you're going to see a lot of polling that shows you know, an acknowledgement that yes, the majority of Americans are in favor of preserving Roe v. Wade, but I think you're going to have Republicans zeroing in on this issue of late-term abortion, saying that support for late-term abortions drastically drops um, as you get closer to the third trimester, for example, or even the second trimester. So I think you're going to see Republicans in that regard trying to paint Democrats and liberals as extreme on that issue. I think you've also seen Republicans Republicans sent out a number of memo, memos, including from the National Republican Senatorial Campaign Committee, essentially saying that, you know, candidates need to be compassionate on this issue and not necessarily present it as a black and white issue, um, but be very careful with their messaging when talking to voters on this issue. And I think that's definitely in a way of, um, you know, a strategy to appeal to those swing state voters. I think you're going to see it impact races up and down the ballot, really starting with the Senate. Remember, um, Republicans were very disciplined in their messaging going back multiple campaign cycles of talking about the importance of electing Republican senators so they could appoint uh, uh, conservative-leaning judges and justices. They were able to appoint these three conservative justices, Gorsuch, Kavanaugh, and Barrett, and now we're sort of in this situation in part because of that. So I think you're going to see Democrats potentially start to take that messaging and say, look, elect Elections have consequences and we are living these consequences right now because we did not have a majority in the Senate at the time. Elect more pro-choice Democrats if you want to protect a woman's freedom and right to choose. Elect more MAGA Republicans if you want to see a nationwide ban on abortion, if you want to see doctors and women arrested, if you want to see no exceptions for rape or incest. In terms of the House, I don't think it will have as big of an impact in terms of messaging, but I think you're still going to hear those candidates talking about it on the Republican side and the Democratic side. And then, of course, further down the ballot, when it comes to some of these attorneys general races in states like Michigan or Wisconsin, Georgia, Arizona, where there are these so-called trigger laws or similar um, laws that would be like trigger laws on the books that would essentially um, restrict abortion access the moment Roe v. Wade is overturned. So I think you're going to see state officials in those states very much campaigning on this issue of the need to elect Democrats in order to protect abortion access. I think you're also going to see it in those gubernatorial races as well.